This big sheet of plywood is left over from some previous project. It already has a coat of primer on it, and I think it measures about 18 inches wide and nearly 9 feet long. I don't need it to be 18 inches, so I want to trim it down to about 12. And to do that, I'm going to fasten a straight edge on the plywood and then run my circular saw along the edge to get the desired width. My wife and I tried to manage this through the table saw, but it was just too wobbly and we were unable to get a straight enough edge. So we resorted to the circular saw and the nailed straight edge method. I did the same thing to trim the board to the correct length, and I'm not worried about nail holes in the plywood because that will later on be covered up by fabric. These pieces will be mounted to the plywood and hold the entire window treatment about three inches away from the wall, and they will also become the mounting brackets a little bit later on. They will also be covered in fabric, so it doesn't really matter that some of the wood is bare and some has been stained and varnished. I'll attach these pieces of wood with a few finish nails until I can drill some holes and drive in a couple of wood screws. What you're seeing done to this side will also be done on the other end and then the entire piece when it's completed will be attached to the wall straddling the windows facing our backyard. While I'm still outside, I hit the edges with the random orbital sander just to make sure that there are no splinters or rough edges that could rip through the fabric later on. Susan found photos of a similar project somewhere online, or maybe it was a magazine, and after talking about it, we decided that we could make this ourselves. I didn't really know what batting was before this project, but she found some at the fabric store and it's going to be held in place with some spray adhesive and then the fabric, the finished fabric with the nice pattern on it, will go on top of the batting with the plywood underneath. Susan's going to apply the adhesive to both the batting and the plywood. This way, with the glue on both surfaces, it's pretty much guaranteed that it's going to stay in place and not go anywhere. Yep. We're being very careful here at this point because this will form a bond pretty instantly. And if it's pulled apart, you're going to lose a lot of that fuzzy batting to the plywood. So if you're careful and you roll it out slowly, you should avoid, like we did, any creases, any little irregularities and it's all nice flat and smooth. We're both kind of figuring this out as we go along and on one side it turned out to be the top side we cut the batting flush with the back edge of the board and then the other side we folded behind the board and glued that down. I think if we were doing it again both sides would have that fold over so that the batting extended on the top and the bottom to the back, but this worked out fine too. This is the fabric that Susan picked out and it's going to match with some of the other colors we have going on on our first floor. And even though there aren't straight lines here on this print, there are certain points that you can pick out and line up together so that when it's horizontal you'll see that there is a a consistency and even spacing between different elements in that pattern. It'll make sense. Just keep watching. With this narrow uh, strip of fabric that we're using, uh, if you look at it long enough, you can see that there are basically three lines of branches or vines that um, move from left to right. So we found one that was pretty centered and then arranged our little red dots to fall into the same spots roughly at the top and the bottom. There's really no clear and easy way to explain how we wrapped the corners here, but if you're good at wrapping Christmas presents, then you might do pretty well at covering a cornice board with fabric. 
Our goal was to hide the staples uh, on the back of the board or behind the fabric itself. Uh, we wanted this to look good from, you know, you're standing in the kitchen, you're looking up, you're looking out the window, and you don't want to see a whole big thick buildup of fabric. You definitely don't want to see any staples. And so there was a lot of cutting and a lot of stapling in areas that are out of the viewer's uh, line of sight. So most of these staples are behind or inside the cornice board. We even used a little bit of hot glue here and there to make the fabric conform to the, the inner corners of the cornice board. This is the back side of the window treatment. It will be facing the wall. So the fabric is a little rough looking here, but you'll never see it. And most of it will be covered by a French cleat, which is really easy to make. I started with a length of wood. I cut it into roughly two equal pieces at a 45 degree angle. And this is how a French cleat can be used to hold something pretty heavy against the wall. The two pieces will just slide together and lock the cornice board into place against the wall. This is the part of the French cleat that will be mounted to the wall. I'm going to center some holes that I'll drill through uh, the sides here. And instead of using 5 inch screws to go through this piece of wood and into the drywall and then into the stud, I'm going to hollow out a little section of this part of the French cleat. That way I will be able to use 3 inch screws instead of 5 inch screws and there'll be a little washer at the uh, near the head of the screw that will pull this cleat to the wall itself into the stud. You'll see. I'm actually pretty proud of this solution. It took me a while to think of it, but it turned out pretty great. The blue painter's tape tells me how far I need to go with this spade drill bit. I want to leave enough material on the cleat so that when I attach this to the wall with a wood screw that the cleat doesn't split. If that happens then I have to start this all over again and make new cleats from scratch. I'll finish the cleat by drilling the hole all the way through using an eighth of an inch drill bit. That way the wood screw can come through and a washer against the head of the screw will pull this whole thing against the wall. I painted all parts of the cleats in the same color as our kitchen walls. This way, if you're at the window and you happen to look up, you won't see bare wood. You'll see uh, two little blocks that are painted the same as the surrounding wall color. Oh, yeah. To cover up the unfinished edges of the fabric, we cut a piece of 8th inch plywood and also painted it the kitchen wall color and held it to the back of the window treatment with a few little finished nails. I measured down from the ceiling because we have one of these over our kitchen sink and also one near the kitchen table. I know for a fact that there are two by fours uh, nailed to each other on either side of the frame, so I didn't even check with a stud finder. I know that there are studs behind this drywall right here. Now it's just a question of putting a couple of three inch wood screws with those washers through the cleat, through the drywall, and into the stud. I forgot to film the part where I checked the cleat placement for being level, and it is. Uh, you just don't get to see that. And now, with both of the cleats mounted to the wall, I can install the cornice board. It's just going to drop onto these cleats, and it won't go anywhere. Gravity will hold it in place. I enjoy making little graphics for these videos, so here's one that I put together in Keynote and it just shows how the different parts of the cleat work and how they're attached to the wall and the cornice board.
we weren't quite sure how much of this fabric we would need for the two cornice boards, so we had some left over. With that extra amount, we were able to cover four kitchen bar stools and also use the spray adhesive to attach some of the fabric to black foam core, which is now on the inside of these glass cabinet doors. Susan and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been Bob and Susan's Workshop. Take care.